Welcome to Build Out with Jim Kunkel, your go-to broadcast for learning more about business in the real world. Your host, Jim Kunkel, who is an accomplished professional in business development, sales, and marketing, and is a technical content creator along with being a rising influencer on LinkedIn. On Build Out, you'll get the latest information and knowledge from subject matter experts from across the globe. Okay, let's get this Build Out broadcast started. And here's your host, Jim Kunkel. Hey, welcome to Build Out. I'm Jim Kunkel. I am super excited because I have an icon on LinkedIn Live, Gail Robertson. Gail, welcome to my broadcast. Well, thank you, James. And I think likewise, you are iconic in terms of the work you're doing uh, in industry and manufacturing to get the word out and create content. And as you know, I've met some amazing guests um, from your show that have become guests on my show. And uh, so we have a lot of things in common, even though we are worlds apart in many ways when it comes to probably the, the, some of the work we do. Yeah. And, you know, the, we were talking right before the broadcast about how, you know, I came up with a thumbnail and, um, you know, as I had mentioned, you know, I've been watching your broadcast since, uh, since you launched it. Uh, I also followed some of the videos that you've been posting to LinkedIn for, for some time as well. And, and I viewed it as, uh, you know, you very much are an experience and I've learned so much from watching not only the interviews that you do and the topics you cover, but also to the discussions that you have and the, and the posts that you do on LinkedIn. But you're much more than just a LinkedIn uh, personality. You know, you have uh, a very unique background as a recovering broadcaster. And I think also to your your life mission, your professional mission, you focused over a number of years in uh, dealing in the manufacturing industry and then also to working with other things, charities and things like that. Um, what an amazing story. And that's why I had to have you on as a guest to be able to share that story and to and to really kind of talk about it. And hopefully we're going to get some engagement from uh, from my audience as well uh, during the live broadcast here. But you know what, Gail, before we get into a, a discussion, why don't you provide a, a Give me that minute or two minute uh, overview of who you are so that people can get to get a better understanding of basically who you are up front. Well, one of the things when I started my business, I decided, you know, I could have went with different titles and uh, I went with something chief curiosity officer. And that also gets a lot of attention because people wonder what the heck is that? And I guess my superpower is indeed curiosity. I didn't realize this until other people were commenting about how curious I was because I thought what I just wanted to know was natural. Like, why not ask why? And yes, I am a recovering journalist. And one of the things that, you know, when I worked previously in mainstream media and I no longer work in that area is that I always want to know more why, spend more time on the why. And sadly, I don't think that's happening as much. So what I've done is brought that skill into other worlds that I've worked in. So yes, I've, I know I've been a fundraiser. I was a journalist. Uh, I ran a bed and breakfast. That was a little detour I took, learned a lot about running a business. And then I was a manager of advertising and promotions and now started my own business. And I, I think a lot of times my, you know, the key element of what makes me who I am is that uh, I am curious. I work with manufacturers to tap into their curiosity. And I have a poster up here in my office of Ted Lasso that I look at, my inspiration. And a key line from that show was, be curious, not judgmental. And that's sort of the core focus of the work I do in manufacturing is I'm really trying to get more people in the, this world to start telling and sharing their story. And I help with the strategy around building how to do that, which ties into the theme of your show, Build Out, because when you build out, you need to also own that power and share your story. Oh, you're so good at tying things down. I appreciate that. You know, Gail, also before the uh, before the live stream launched, uh, you were consuming a little bit of a beverage there from a coffee mug. Are you a coffee drinker? I am a coffee drinker. I also like tea. You know, I'm one of those, like, I, I don't really ever fall into one specific category, but I'd love to know more about your coffee brand that uh, is one of your sponsors, I believe, correct? Yeah, very good. I'm going to actually play a little clip from uh, Coffee Brand Coffee. So actually, Coffee Brand Coffee was created by, um, it's a coffee company created by a YouTuber. And um, the uh, program he has is called the, the Quartering. 
And what Jeremy started was a coffee um, company, and he he's really helping to support the content creators. It doesn't matter what platform you're on. And uh, I actually posted right before the broadcast the, the link that you yeah. can purchase uh, premium quality teas and also coffee uh, from a coffee brand coffee and kind of help out the broadcast. You know, any pennies can help kind of offset some of my expenses and things like that. But um, I'm going to go ahead and play that clip right now. Hold on one minute. Thank you. Let's talk about the power of a great cup or mug of coffee. Coffee drinking dates back to at least the 15th century from the Sufi monasteries of Yemen. And by the 16th century, the practice of brewing and drinking coffee spread to Eastern Europe and Southeast Asia. Today, coffee is one of the most highly traded commodities and after water, the most consumed global beverage. For many around the world, coffee helps start the day and provides a welcome physical and mental boost throughout the day. The official premium coffee of this broadcast comes from CoffeeBrandCoffee.com, who fresh roast coffee as orders come in. Please support this broadcast and my content by using the special build-out link to CoffeeBrandCoffee.com. Order some premium coffee and teas today and support build-out at the same time. Oh, I love coffee. And you know, the one beautiful thing about coffee First off, it's a good personal investment. And also when it comes to yourself and your financial future, coffee is probably very recession proof. So uh, anyone who's looking to invest, I'd say get involved into coffee related stocks um, because everybody's drinking coffee no matter what the economic situation is. <laughs> and I love that promo because you had history. You had, it was interesting. I was listening to it. That is a great, that's a great way to advertise. People take note. That is very meta right now. We need to all take note of how to do a great ad is teach me something I may not have known. Bravo. I yeah, see where Chrysler popped in the, and anger. Yes, yes, yes. Well, back to the with the coffee. That's uh, it's kind of the, the nerd in me coming out. So, um, hey, Gail, let's uh, let's we're kind of kick off. And, you know, as a broadcaster, I, I learn a lot from watching programs like yourself and there's other content creators on, on YouTube and also with LinkedIn. And I, I think myself, I've kind of improved a lot from matching and mirroring and learning what you know how to do things and how what topics to cover and things like that you know you had mentioned earlier that you're a recovering broadcaster for those who are watching or thinking about really getting involved in what we do uh, and really putting content out there on any type of platform is do you have to have that background as somebody who's a content producer uh, a media personality or a journalist who you know does broadcast do you really need to have that background the short answer, no. <laughs> In fact, some of the best people that are live streaming, doing shows, have no background. And since we are live, I do want to ask, I don't know, uh, is this also on YouTube? Yes. If you go okay. to uh, Jim Kunkel, just search under Jim Kunkel on YouTube. It's also under Jim Kunkel on Facebook as well. I, uh, I do try to play it safe with LinkedIn. can be a little buggy, but I can tell everyone who's watching it live that the replay will be perfect. So okay. just in and case Inger, Inger has just dropped in the link. I will say one of the things when you're going live and doing shows, LinkedIn live has been glitchy lately. So I am even recommending everybody because um, my show is on after this one. And I'm asking everybody to go to LinkedIn right out of the gate because uh, it, I don't know if you've noticed that it's been glitchy. So that's the other thing. You know what? When you go live and that, you know, things happen and there are people like Inger ready to jump in and put an exact link. There's lots of helpful people. You know, people often say, you know, where do you start? And that's where I come in when I work with manufacturers. So my three-step process is sign up, suit up, and show up. So first of all, you have to have the right mindset. You have to decide that that's what you want to do. Then you do some research to get going, and then you show up. And showing up is so crucial. You know, on LinkedIn, as an example, only 1% to 5% of people are posting. So I tell people in manufacturing, you if you're not posting, you're just leaving so much on the table for other for the one to five percent to scoop up. I was just at a show yesterday, the uh, Shop Metalworking uh, Technology Expo, and I talked to a lot of people. Um, some people are on LinkedIn; they're kind of embarrassed. Oh, yeah, I'm kind of on it, not on it. And then I heard two bold people, two men that said, "Yep, I'm on it." One said, "Oh, I love LinkedIn," and um, said he gets all or a good chunk of his leads, his really strong leads from LinkedIn. Now he's more of a lurker. So he's out there 
combing the pages, watching. So he doesn't post much, but he's learning and watching. The other person did more posting and has also said it was because of showing up on LinkedIn that he's now made contact with people that he was struggling to get in contact with before. So that's sort of a longer answer is that, you know, these are people that don't have a background in uh, journalism. I just happen to, you know, because I'm comfortable with this, but uh, I help, this is where I come in. I do help people in manufacturing to develop a strategy around how to show up um, on social media. Yeah, it's, well, manufacturing industry is one industry that does have a challenge, I think, when it comes to messaging. And I professionally work in the uh, global protective coatings industry. And um, the same thing tends to happen in my industry as well. So what I had focused on some years back is to get involved in producing content for my industry. But then on the side of that, I also decided to do some professional broadcasting regarding, you know, marketing, sales, business development, you know, how to kind of build your own professional brand. And mm -hmm. what I found a benefit from LinkedIn was that I could really compete with some of the big players out there. And I'm talking about icons and mm -hmm. not only my industry, but also some of the icons that might be in the business world out there that are prolific on LinkedIn. And, you know, they post content and, and other things like that. So I say to everybody, if, if I can do it, anybody can do it. I'm not a broadcaster. Yeah. Um, and the thing with it is it doesn't matter what industry you're in. I've had the opportunity over a number of uh, really over the last two and a half years with build out to interview people within the manufacturing marketing, or I'm sorry, manufacturing industry. And a couple of them actually do tailor content and live streaming and podcasting to the manufacturing sector. So, um, you know, like I say, anybody, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And Gail, I think what very important, you know, really impressed me was the the humor that you in, interject into your content, but also too, you really drive right to the core message. And then earlier, like you were talking with the coffee with the coffee commercial, you know, you're really telling everybody the the what's the why and and how and really how to really improve themselves. You know, what what are some of the motivations with your broadcast that really helped you come up and say, I, I got to do this, I got to live stream. Well, I was working in manufacturing and I just heard all of these great stories and people had so much to share and yet they were often reluctant to do so, whether it was out of fear, whether it was because they didn't know how to do it. And I thought, okay, we need to put a spotlight on the people who are showing up. So I've been bringing up people who show up and have success. So they talk about their success stories. Now I'm going into 2023. I'm, I'm going to be starting to look at people who are showing up, but maybe need to show up more on, online as well, but are doing more behind the scenes because we need to hear more of those stories. So my motivation is really curiosity, interest, and it was tapping into, you know, my or or origin roots, which is around journalism and interviewing people. And I, you know, and I realized for me, interviewing people is like, it energizes me. And because I love to, I love to do some research beforehand. So I usually do a quick, you know, I want to know a little bit, but I don't spend hours on research for these shows because I will, and I also don't provide people with set up questions. What I do is say, let's have a discussion. So sometimes I don't know where the show is going to go. And sometimes I think, oh, I really want to talk about this. And we veer off and have, um, you know, get into a really good discussion. So, you know, in terms of people that are looking to get into this and saying, should I start with this? There's things in journal. I mean, okay, I took journalism, but really it's not like rocket science. Let me tell you, because really it's about uh, asking basic questions. Who, what, where, when, why, how? Just list out those questions, start asking people like, okay, well, what you just asked, what is your motivation? Who has inspired you? Why do you do this? Like, just start asking those questions that, you know, because if you, if something comes to mind, what you want to know, there's lots of people out listening that have the same question and same. So there are, it really is true. It's, you know, there are no dumb questions. If you have that question and you're sitting there, how many times have you been in a room and someone asks a question like, oh, I was going to ask it, but that was going to be embarrassing. And then it, everybody has this relief. I've asked about things sometimes, you know, even when I was working in mold making at first, it took me a while. And I tell this story now to know the difference between a molder and a mold maker. I didn't like, okay, I got confused with that. And then there was tool maker. And I'm like, what's the difference between a tool maker and a mold? Like, 
So I started asking questions. Luckily, I had a great mentor. Uh, shout out to Tim Galbraith from Kevlar Tool, who was very patient with me. But it's because that's how he learned about the industry, too, was started out spending time on the shop floor. I love when I can get in a shop and walk through and I'll just ask some of the people like, what do you do? Why, why do you do this? Show me what's on your screen. And yeah, that's how we all learn. Yeah, for me, I curiosity is really important. And, and that's kind of where you build out when I first, you know, build out, we're in, a, I'm in the second season. So, you know, roughly almost two years into just this series. And prior to that, I did uh, coatings and corrosion content, but, you know, which I, I kind of do uh, still with live audio. And then 2023, I have some plans for um, my industry and content on my YouTube channel. When I was originally coming up with build out, and I'm trying, I'm talking with other peers, I'm talking to friends on LinkedIn, professionals who do live streaming and said, you know, this is a concept I had. I really want to help people do this and get everyone's stories and get their perspective and what was best practices for them. And, you know, the questions were always, well, for title, what are you going to call it? And you know, I kept using that word build out. I want to help people build out their marketing career, their sales career, or build out themselves professionally. And that's where build out came from. But what really made build out, I think, unique and also too very impactful for people because I get, I get direct messages from people. I get emails from people, too, that really find value in what this broadcast does, is that it takes the, um, the knowledge, the experience, and also, to your perspective for, for you, Gail, and it really delivers it in a real-life situation to everyone to understand exactly, this is what Gail does. This is what I can do to kind of really, you know, if I want to be in manufacturing, I want to do uh, broadcasting, you know, this is what Gail does. This is what I should do if I want to do it. And, you know, I've always looked in my particular industry, we need to have more voices out there that mm -hmm. are willing to get it live. Same thing with manufacturing. I, I would say the same thing, you know, get out there uh, and, and, and talk about topics and interview very interesting people and, and be curious when it comes to new ways of doing business, because manufacturing just as much as the protective coatings industry globally has a great story and mm -hmm. a very impactful story on everyone's daily life. But a lot of times people don't know. They go, oh, it's manufacturing or, oh, they're just bridge painters and things like that. But there's, you don't realize how much we rely on the manufacturing sector, protective coating sector, even fighting corrosion, how critical it is to infrastructure and living our daily lives and everything like that. So next question I have for you, um, your broadcast will be coming up at, at one o'clock. So I want to make sure we don't impact yeah. with you on that. <laughs> no, I'm good, yeah. Is that how do you line up your guest? Well, I, I do it somewhat intuitively, I'd say. I, I look, um, I don't have any like necessarily big, like I don't, I mean, some people book right into, you know, months and months ahead. I like to kind of see where the industry is going, what I, what my interest is and, and, and who also appears on my radar. So uh, I do try to, you know, mix up from a diversity perspective because in manufacturing, a big issue right now is recruiting, getting more people in. So I mean, the easy route would be to just go people necessarily that I have more contact with. I try to seek out other people that maybe don't look like me, have a different, I want people that have a different background. Um, so diversity in all realms, right? And try to also get people from manufacturing. Last week, I had Amanda Tento who spoke about Google My Business. So she's not necessarily in manufacturing per se, but I've brought in people to help manufacturers better understand how they can show up and uh yeah so i think that was the yeah did i, I sometimes i go off i'm like oh rabbit <laughs> squirrel <laughs> rabbit hole squirrel <laughs> hey don't worry i do the same thing i can yeah. drift all over the place um a lot of times uh if people want to give me a visual cue to could you stop talking jim uh but uh, no no worries on that the well, uh i, I think what I have Chris Lukey on, who is the host. Yes. He's the media, manufacturing media maverick. He, I like, I'm kind of fangirling a bit because I've been following him. He has manufacturing happy hour. I can remember way back when watching him, listen to his show. And now he's a guest on my show and he is a podcaster. He's actually an engineer who got into sales and marketing. So I'm hoping anybody that's sitting there as engineers lurking back there going, well, I don't really like being out there and an extrovert. Check into what Chris has done, what he's yeah. doing, and the success he has. But he brings in, he talks about, you know, music, 
Uh, we're going to be getting into some of his interest in roller coasters. So like I, I do my research and I'm like, okay, this guy is like, he's multifaceted, but he's also out there sharing the stories in manufacturing. And I think that's key that we, we need to hear from more people like Chris and like yourself. Yeah, Chris, I uh, had a chance to interview Chris last year and what an amazing um, professional, but also his broadcast, you know, his YouTube channel, he does stuff on LinkedIn. In fact, I think he's part of the LinkedIn Accelerator program. Yes. Uh, and uh, that's amazing because that, when you get that type of level of recognition where, you know, you actually have, you know, LinkedIn looking to to really work with you and to, to kind of in, in, invest a little bit into you when it comes to uh, content creation, that that's amazing. And, you know, again, that's something that's open to, to anybody at any given mm -hmm. time. It's just, I think the more you broadcast and the thing that I found, the feedback I always get is, you know, Jim, just be yourself. People want in real life. Mm -hmm. uh, they're okay if I say um or ah. Uh, they're okay if I kind of drift a little bit because they understand. And I think the other thing is it really, they want to get to know a little bit me as a personality, but also too, they want to be able to say, Hey, I relate to him and uh, I have some of the same thoughts he has and, and uh, like to share that. That's why I always like when people post uh, messages and, and also to um, get involved with the broadcast. Um, we'll get, Gail, are you okay for another couple yeah. more minutes? Oh, here? No, I'm good. Cause I'm all set. Uh, Chris and I like, he'll be, he, he knows his way around StreamYard and jumping on, so I don't have to do a lot of prep with him. Okay, he'll be, good. He'll be all ready to go. So, yeah, we can keep going. Probably about another five more minutes, yep. and then we'll make sure yep, we get you, get you, get you yep. going because i got to be able to be ready to watch it once. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Gail, when it comes to, uh, you know, your background, also to some of the things you do, you also are involved with other type of initiatives and uh, some of it I read off your profile, I believe, at charities as well. Is there any particular charities you typically, charities that you typically work with? Well, one in particular that I got involved with here locally, and this is all to do with networking, connecting people knowing me, is Canadian Mental Health Association of Windsor-Essex. And, you know, I'm right now involved with a new initiative called a Youth Hub, and it's for youth, by youth. Really fascinated with that. So I'm helping out. Um, as a consultant, but also, you know, volunteering some extra time just because I really think, you know, our youth, we need to put focus and energy into that. So that's one program involved in. And I also am on the board of Canadian Association of Mold Makers. And I was just at the expo yesterday, uh, called into duty, our one staff was six. So I sort of had to jump in and uh, seize the day, so to speak, and uh, help with uh, getting, you know, the table and working with the other board members on welcoming people and talking about both mold making and automation because automate Canada is our sister organization and just, you know, helping to promote the uh, power of advocacy and education around the people who make things that make things. Oh, outstanding. Outstanding. Is there uh, is there any preview that you would want to give or can give him? Again, it might be top secret right now for t what's coming from Gail now and, and Gail, um, the experience for 2023. Yeah, well, I can tell a little bit. Part of what I want to do is really focus more on uh, still doing strategy with uh, manufacturers, but broadening that in terms of looking at how to encourage other people to develop their personal brand, to help tell their story, and to use my skills in public relations and outreach to media, and also helping prepare people to go on podcasts and interviews by the media. This is something I do like breathing. It's very easy for me to do. And I realized in talking to someone else that I know that was reluctant to accept going on a podcast because this person was uncertain about, um, you know, because there weren't going to be questions. And I said, well, you don't even know the questions. You just, you have your key points as they ask questions, you filter them in. So it's about preparing people because I've been a reporter. I know what might happen. And, you know, a lot of people are afraid that, well, what if I get asked something and I don't know the answer to, and, you know, I always say, that's an easy way to respond. You say, you know what? I don't know that answer, but you know what? I'm going to look into it. And if you want to follow me on LinkedIn, or if you want to spy me with your email, I'll follow up later with an email. You know, we're, we're so afraid of, you know, too often afraid of making a mistake, saying the wrong thing and, oh my God, not knowing something. Well, you know, that shows that we're real. You know, I caught myself the other day, sometimes someone asked me something, I started to answer and I'm like, you know, you know what? I don't know. I was just going to start to just talk and give you an answer. And I'm like, I don't know the answer to that. Right. And I laugh because part of me is I sometimes feel like, oh, I, I can find an answer to that. 
And it's okay sometimes to say, you know what, I, I actually don't know that. Um, so yeah, that's going into 2023 is really more of a focus from a public relations and branding with individuals still working with companies, but really getting, you know, social media is that it's social. And, you know, if you look at no light trust, uh, I'm going to be talking to Chris at one o'clock about this, the whole idea of, you know, a lot of people in manufacturing sales and marketing salespeople, they will go to a trade show. They will go get in their car and show up to do, you know, knock on someone's door. They'll sit all day and do cold calls and they won't spend some time on social media and going and put on their LinkedIn. And I want to get to more people and celebrate the stories of a couple of people I spoke to yesterday. There's someone that uh, was a client that is now, um, you've seen Inger is here today. Inger works with me and Inger does uh, some specialized work on getting people set up on LinkedIn, optimizing their profile and basically coaching them along. So my job is often when I'm working with someone, look at the big picture, the strategy, where you need to go. Um, I will also be shortly posting a video talking about that. Where do you start? What platforms to use? And then it's about getting that, um, get out of your, get out of your way and like you say, build out, build out and own it, own your story, own your content, and just take from what you've been doing on in person and bring it over to social with a few tweaks. And that's where Inger and I come along to help uh, show how to do that and to get people more comfortable with it because there are success stories of people that are using LinkedIn in particular in manufacturing if you're, let me stress this again, if you are in sales, in manufacturing, and you are not on LinkedIn, you are going to lose out, you're leaving money on the table, and you are basically shooting the finger to getting new clients. There I go, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gail, thank you so much um, for this opportunity to have a, a great conversation with you. I really enjoyed this live stream. How can people follow you and also to uh, get your content and uh, use that content? Well, I would invite everyone to please come over to YouTube. You can find me, uh, Gail Now, Gail Robertson, Gail Now on YouTube. That's where my show is. I have all my previous shows there. I am going to also be posting more shorter videos talking about, you know, where to begin, how to do a selfie. I'm going to do some real basics for people. So when they're out, a lot of people are reluctant to do a selfie. And so I explain the how to do a selfie and the why and why it is not egotistical. It's actually encourages more people to get involved in your photos. So YouTube, number one, I'm also on LinkedIn as Gail Robertson, also as Gail Now. If you want to see a little of my fun side, uh, I am on TikTok as Gail Now. I'm also on Twitter. I love that platform. It, I talk more about my cycling and other things I do, as well as when I'm at, I do a lot of live tweeting when I'm at events. And then uh, Instagram is Gail Now One. So, but if you search Gail Now on Google, you'll find me just about anywhere. And then there's my website, gailnow.com. So I highly encourage everyone to uh, follow, also create a connection with Gail. Um, you're gonna have a wonderful experience. And, uh, and uh, you're going to learn a lot. So, Gail, thank you so much. I appreciate you for being here today. Thank you, Jim. I really appreciate I appreciate your show and I appreciate learning. And I'm excited to hear about all your changes going into 2023. So I have a feeling we're going to be talking again in 2023. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> so, everyone, hey, thank you for joining in uh, today. And also uh, make sure that you do follow me and give uh, this interview a like and share it with other colleagues. We'll see you next Wednesday. Everybody have a good rest of your day. I hope you found value with today's Build Out broadcast. Make sure you connect with Jim on LinkedIn and subscribe to his YouTube channel. This way you'll be notified on new live streams and when new content is released. Please give today's broadcast a like and share with your connections and colleagues. Thanks for watching and please visit buildoutproductions.com for additional content and to join the mailing list so you can keep updated on other streams and quality content from the creators on the Build Out Productions team.